This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Welcome back to Hour 2 of Gun Sports Radio, where your hosts, Dave Stahl, Lance Pelkey, and Michael Schwartz, educate you on anything and everything related to our Second Amendment right. Visit GunSportsRadio.com with your questions and comments or to learn how to become a sponsor and or guest of the show. Now here comes Hour 2 of Gun Sports Radio and your hosts, Dave, Lance, and Michael. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. This is FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. Hey, this hour is brought to you by our good friends at Cali Key. Drop in a Cali Key into any AR-15 or AR-10 to instantly make it California compliant. For more information, check out Cali Key at CaliKey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y.com. Self-defense and emergencies can happen to anyone, and unfortunately, the justice system may not be on your side. What? While you, yeah, I know, really. <laughs> so while you protect your family and property, U.S. Law Shield is here to defend you 24-7, 365 days a year with the comprehensive self-defense coverage at an affordable price. Bad guys don't take days off, and neither does our coverage. What's your plan after you defend yourself or your family? Consider a plan from U.S. Law Shield. Check them out today at uslawshield.com. That's uslawshield.com. This segment is brought to you by San Diego County Gun Owners. Go to sdcgo.org. Join up today for as little as $10 a month, and you will be absolutely impressed with what you'll get with that $10. But if you really want to have fun, go 10 ringing. If you go 10 ring, man, oh, man, you'll feel like a king. So check them out at sdcgo.org. This segment is, uh, or I guess we're going to endorse some candidates. Well, we 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 rolled out. So first off, just want to throw out there a uh, Go Pack Go. Looks like they're leading. Don't and, say uh, that. I can't wait to eat my new skis when I get home. That's waiting for me. So uh, yeah, we endorsed a bunch of candidates. Uh, we actually came up with two lists. Uh, the board um, of uh, San Diego County Gun Owners. Uh, the first list is all the people that are running on uh, at in March third because March third is the primary, and there are a few uh, folks that we that we need to make sure get through the primary so they can get through the uh, to the general. The primary there's only two cities in San Diego that have a primary, and that's Chula Vista and San Diego, and we have candidates in both, including the mayor of San Diego, uh, who we endorsed uh, Scott Sherman, um, and we have a couple of uh, city council members, and then in Chula Vista, Mike Diaz. Uh, who's an enormously uh, strong supporter of the uh, Second Amendment. And then the county level, the County Board of Supervisors. County Board of Supervisors is kind of like the city council for the county. And uh, so we need your help. We need you to go to San Diego County Gun Owners dot com or SDCGO dot org or check out our Facebook page. Get on our email list and help these guys win. Raise money, uh, you know, for them. Uh, donate to them. Call them up and say, "Hey, how can I help?" Uh, you know, I saw you're endorsed by San Diego County Gun Owners. And the other thing is, and I think I'm going to write an article on this coming up. Uh, a strategy that that Second Amendment folks need to adopt is don't vote for somebody who's not endorsed by a Second Amendment group. Good point. So if if they're not in, so leave it blank. You know, even if you're you, you know you don't you don't know who to vote for. Should I vote for this guy or the other guy or this woman or the other woman? Leave it blank because uh, far too often some of these candidates, uh, uh, even if they're pro Second Amendment or even if they you know say they are, even if they say they are, even if they're they, you know they do this thing where they say, well, yeah, I'm pro Second Amendment, but I don't want anybody to know about it. Okay, great. Then we're not we you don't get our support. You know, if you're going to treat us. Uh, you know, like a like a disease to be avoided, then mm-hmm. you don't get anybody's support, and that's that's one thing to help. But it's important to get these folks elected to stop these ridiculous laws. Like we just spent uh, the first hour talking to Masad Ayub, who's w- was awesome. He mm-hmm. talks a lot about defensive gun use and carrying a firearm for self defense. Uh, we just talked to Casey uh, about the Glock 19 and how it's good for carrying. We talk a lot about CCWs and all that good stuff. But, uh, you know, one thing that's really hindering our ability here in California, and it's going it to get it's getting worse and worse every year, is this pistol roster. Dave, I don't know. How much do you know about the pistol roster? I don't know anything. A lot of people don't. They don't really understand. Um, if you walk into a gun shop in Nevada or Arizona or pretty much 49 other states, 
um, you're going to see this enormous selection of, of handguns. Or if you open up the pages of a magazine, you know, NRA's magazine or one of the other, you know, guns and ammo or whatever, they'll do a review on like, you know, Springfield's new Hellcat. It's this new carry gun. If you go down to a San Diego or any California gun shop and you look for this new firearm or you look for the same size selection that they have in Arizona, <laughs> It's not there. Mm-hmm. So why? Why can't we sell the exact same things that, you know, uh, other you know, states do? And the reason is back in uh, under uh, uh, under Republican uh, Schwarzenegger, when he was governor, they said, look, we're going to put together a, uh, a drop test, a safety test. So if people want to sell firearm here in California, it has to be. Uh, safe. You have to be able to drop it, and it won't go off. It has to be made of you know quality materials. It can't be you know a cheap piece of junk. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know all the Democrats said, "Hey, great," and all the weak Republicans said, "Well, gee, golly, gosh, I guess that's okay." <laughs> and very few people stood up and said, "Hey, wait a minute, this is going to turn into a de facto." Uh, ban on pistols. They're really going to cinch this thing down, and it's going to turn into a ban on on pistols. No, it's not going to. Well, that's a, so. Every oh, you're just you know tinfoil hat. You know, oh, you're the sky is falling. Sky is falling. Right. Well, along the lines, what happened? I want to get too too far down into the weeds, but uh, they basically said, look, one of the things we want to make sure that, that every semi-automatic pistol has is a firing pin that stamps a number onto the casing of the bullet before it it gets ejected from the firearm so that when cops show up they can pick up a casing and say oh here's a serial number we're just going to trace this right back to you know whoever owned that firearm and oh say you know case is solved you know um and everyone said wait a minute that technology doesn't exist yet so they said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put in a little uh, a little section that says that this is required once the technology exists, then it'll be required. And it's up to the attorney general uh, to, to pull the trigger, so to speak. Well, Kamala Harris, who just had a miserably horrible failure of a of a campaign for president. And now she's mad, so this isn't good. Well, she, well this was years ago when yeah. she was attorney general. Actually, before she was a senator, she was the attorney general of California. She decided that the technology exists. And so, okay, boom. Now every gun going forward uh, has to have this, this stamp technology, this micro stamp technology. Yes, and an activist court upheld that, uh, that um opinion i guess so so far they did yeah Yeah. and and but to the credit of all the manufacturers they all said okay great look we've complied with everything Mm -hmm. every curveball that california has thrown at us we've complied with everything you want us to do we're going to comply so show us who has this technology and we'll comply with this as well we'll we'll happily put in these micro stamp uh, firing pins <laughs> doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah, they said, "Hey, tough doesn't exist." Hold on a second, I got it here someplace. It's in my drawer. So the attorney general said, "Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that this is now required, uh, even and though it's not a, not available. Doesn't exist." So, like Joe said, they went to court and uh, the lower courts upheld. Yeah, and the the impact of that is we lose guns every year. More guns are thrown off of the roster. Like uh, in 2019, I think we lost 67 guns because uh, manufacturers either stopped making the old guns, like for a Glock, like that Glock mm-hmm, 19 mm-hmm. we were talking about. Glock is up to Gen 5 right now and, yeah. and getting past Gen 5. Uh, we can only buy a Gen 3 here in California. Glock still makes the Gen 3s probably because of the market here and stuff. But at some point, they may decide, hey, you know what? But does Maybe that, does that gun have the technology? Uh, no, no, it does not. So the so old, what's what's the rationale? The older ones there. If you were if you were if you got in before they came up with that, they grandfathered things in basically. And what happens and and correct me if I'm wrong with this, Michael. Every year the manufacturers have to submit guns, they have to submit firearms, they have to pay a fee. They go through all the other testing. Mm-hmm. They're not required to do the micro stamp thing on the things that were already on the roster. Anything new that they want on the roster has to have the micro stamp. So nothing new, essentially. Or if it's an old, like, let's say you're, you know, your Glock 19 Gen 3. Let's say that they they want to do they want it to be a different color or they just want to change the material that they make one of the springs out of or something like that. That's not allowed. You can't do so. You can't even improve old models, you know, with with new modern materials that are actually safer 
any any kind of change to that gun, and they say, okay, you got to have a micro stamp now. So a Glock 19, a Gen 3 Glock 19, is the exact same thing, uh, you know, uh, that it was 15 years ago. Mm. Meanwhile, a, a Glock 19 Generation 4 and Generation 5, you know, have have Im- improved internals in a lot of situations. Except they don't have the ability to stamp. The micro stamp, which nobody does. That doesn't exist. No, so they which, don't have, you know. Which, again, was a silly thing to start. Because it's like most of these laws Well, here, yeah, they're they all stupid and silly. And, and they're, be, they're, they're being enacted by people that most likely have never shot. Well, from law enforcement's point of view, for instance, if, you know, when they, re, when they recover a gun, say, that's used in a crime, it's, it's because the criminal is shot and he's there with it. You know, mm-hmm. aside from that, they very sel- seldom get things like that. And as far as, uh, you know, say you did have a micro stamp technology and you did have um, the uh, stamped number gets on the shell casings. Great. Well, there's nothing to stop somebody from grabbing a handful of shell casings at the range and throwing yeah. them around their crime scene if they wanted to do something like that. You know, it's. Well, and how much room is there on a shell casing? It's not. That well, you can only put maybe three numbers? Which is, not, which is why the technology doesn't exist. Well, of course. <laughs> so it, it's inhibiting our ability to get firearms that we can carry, even though now we have CCWs, women with smaller hands. It's, it's inhibiting. So uh, yeah. a year ago, actually last year, San Diego County Gun Owners joined Firearms Policy Coalition and Firearms Policy Foundation with an amicus brief. Um, the coalition argues that through the Unsafe Handgun Act and its handgun roster requirements, the state of California has created an illusion of choice. In truth, the handgun roster has become a time capsule where Californians in 2019 are forced to choose from a smaller, shrinking list of available state-approved handgun models, which predate the roster's micro-stamping requirements. Well, you know they're just trying so, to wipe them all out. That's, that's exactly what's happening. Get involved. Get yes. the right people elected. Yes. Join. Become a member of San Diego County. Yes. Counters. Yes. Go to SD. CGO.org. See who we recommend. And while you're there, if you're interested in the details of this roster, if this is the first you're hearing of it or you weren't clear on it, there's at least two blog articles that we've written over the last uh, couple of years Mm -hmm. uh, on the blog page on the San Diego County Gun Owners site. Take a look at those. It's got all the information. It's got links to all the different pages, and you'll find out all about it. And if it makes you mad, get involved. All right, we're going to take a quick break. This is Gun Sports Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, The Answer. All right, folks. Hey, welcome back. You're listening to Gun Sports Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170, The Answer. This segment is brought to you by... Cali Key, California assault weapon laws make it almost impossible to own an AR pattern rifle. What's the solution? Cali Key. It'll convert any mill spec direct impingement AR platform rifle into a straight pull bolt action rifle so it can have all the features without being considered an assault weapon. It's a true drop in solution. No milling, no aesthetic modifications, and no turning off your gas system. Keep your entire AR collection intact at a price you can afford. Cali Key. Check out Cali Key at CaliKey.com. That's K-A-L-I-K-E-Y. K-A-L-I-K-E-Y dot com. So, we were discussing, or you had, you were on America One. One America, the news network. It's a uh, cable news network. Uh, I think generally considered a kind of a conservative bent. With Graham Ledger, um, and uh, they had 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 me come on and talk a little bit about San Diego County Gunners, and you actually go into uh, what's going on in Virginia. So uh, I brought up San Diego County Gun Owners, Orange County Gun Owners, Riverside County Gun Owners, and San Bernardino County Gun Owners. Uh, the reason being is because uh, he wanted to hear. All right, well, you know what all is happening in Virginia. You know what are your thoughts? Uh, uh, you know what what what's going to be the result? That sort of thing. So what we were we were talking about, what we talked on on air with 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 Graham Ledger was that uh, yeah that you know they're passing the Second Amendment sanctuary um, uh, sanctuary uh, resolutions, and you can see this clip by the way by going to San Diego County Gun Owners or go to our Facebook page and and this segment is on there. But uh, there's some misconceptions as to exactly what's going on, and we we talked about this just a couple of weeks ago that these resolutions aren't really changing public policy. It's just 
uh, reaffirming that, yeah, we believe in the Second Amendment. Uh, you know, there's a couple of, of uh, issues with that. I don't want to say that they're problems, but there are some issues with that. Number one, uh, the people that are passing these anti-gun laws also say that they support the Second Amendment. So, you know, there's clearly it's not that simple just saying, well, gee, we don't like the Second Amendment. Uh, we like the Second Amendment. We disagree on the Second Amendment. It's the size and scope and how the Second Amendment is applied that that is the real issue. Um, number two is a resolution uh, in the form of these counties we're passing were non-binding. So they don't actually change any uh, policy. They don't actually enforce any or change any public policy. So a lot of folks think that once these resolutions are passed, that the laws are null and void in these counties. And that simply isn't the case. You know, if you look at some of the horrible California laws, you know, gun laws, um, a lot of them aren't enforced by police departments or sheriff. They're enforced by California DOJ. That's basically, that's the state. Um, And uh, so if a a county can say all day, hey, we're not going to enforce it, which, by the way, is not what's going on in Virginia. But even if they did say, hey, we're not going to enforce it, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, the state folks will come in and enforce it. And, uh, you know, and, and as we're watching this and I'm watching, um, you know, discussion groups and comments and articles being written in California, and it really is like, you know, California circa 1998, 1998, 1999, all these things were happening back then. All the same things are being said, all the same, uh, you know, solutions, quote unquote, are being brought up. All the same threats are being made. Everybody's, you know, they're either going to, you know, there's the there's the not from my cold, dead hands group. Um, And then there's the well, I'm leaving. You know, people are actually threatening to leave Virginia. I don't know where they're going because a lot of people from California went to Virginia. That was one of the states they went to uh, to avoid these uh, gun laws. Um, but what's not being discussed enough is, hey, what are you guys going to do to change this public policy that's coming down the pike? You know, Virginia is hell bent on on doing all these these gun laws that California has has experienced in the last 20 years. And, um, you know, the solution of, well, gee, I'm going to stand here on my front porch with an armed gun. I mean, really, that's that's not a solution. Um, so the people that are in Virginia really aren't that different than the people in California. My prediction is, uh, it's going to happen. <laughs> you know, it's, it's everybody's, it's going to pass. Um, people are going to comply. People are going to leave. Um, unless somebody stands up and says, Hey, we need to start getting the right people elected. You know, some of the, some of the things uh, that they pass won't survive lawsuits. Some of them will. Um, some of the lawsuits are going to take three decades. We've seen that over and over and over again. But what is not going to be a solution is someone saying, hey, I won't comply or saying, hey, I'm leaving the state. Now, Joe, you, you pointed out that one of the things that is different in Virginia and California is, you know, passing the resolutions, which I think is good. Yeah. And I, I think that that's kind of the difference between what we did here in California, which was essentially nothing in terms of gun owners <laughs> and um what the people in Virginia seem to be doing because, uh, you know, the 95 counties in Virginia, I think over 90 of them pass these, these resolutions. And as Michael was saying, they're non-binding, but the idea that they actually got boards of supervisors in all those counties. So the governing people in the counties to stand up and make that statement, I think is significant. I think it's much more than, than happened out here in California. And um, and I think it's true, you know, they're going to pass the laws. It doesn't look like the Democrats are going to back down on this. Um, so what's going to be interesting is to see what happens when they do pass the laws. And if that leads to conflict like that, which hopefully it won't. But I think the bigger thing now is this will work as a wake up call because it already looks like they've woken up now because of the sanctuary stuff that they've passed. And if this turns into a wake up where now people do get mobilized and they do start uh, getting involved and they can, uh, they make the decision that, okay, we have to get these people out of office because, you know, if you followed the elections there, they pumped a bunch of money in. There was a number, I mean, it sounded like uh, part of it was the Republicans were kind of asleep at the wheel. They let a lot of, um, a lot of races go uncontested. Bloomberg pumped in a bunch of money on the Democrat side. I think they outspent the Republicans three to one or four to one, something like that. Um, 
but the other thing too that I've read recently is that a lot of those races were very very close. They were decided by five thousand votes, right. things like that. For fewer, yeah. So if people wake up and mobilize, which it looks like they're kind of doing with the sanctuary thing, we'll see how this plays out in the next, um, you know, in the next set of elections back there. The people may be able to go back and get rid of these people and then overturn this stuff. So it'll it'll be an interesting year. But I. I and I, I agree with you. All that is, it, it's good. It's And it is significant. And I'm glad it's happening. I wish more was happening out here. But I, I truly, uh, I think people are fooling themselves if they think that there is any other solution other than, you know, organizing people and gathering money and getting the right people elected in, in Richmond. There's zero, there's nothing else that's going to say. Trump is not going to step, step in and save them. The lawsuits are not going to step in and save them. Uh, you know, being armed to the teeth and not complying is not going to save you. Moving to West Virginia is not going to save you. There is one solution and one solution only, and that's getting the right people. All these people that just got elected need to get unelected. <laughs> so you need no. to run people, fund them heavily, and get them elected. And I agree with that completely. I think that that's the way it has to go. With the the other minor addition, I would add is that whatever does happen out there may spur the Supreme Court to finally make some kind of a decision and help out with some of this stuff. Because re realistically, if you're going to interpret the Second Amendment, you know, all of these laws infringe on that right. I mean, they yeah. all do. And it's it's way past time for, for somebody to step up and, and, and say that, really. Somebody yeah. like the court. I just have seen so much, hand, so much uh, hand-wringing you know, going on and, mm -hmm. and people, there's just, there's no silver bullet out there. It just, you, we got to get back to, and a lot of people stand up and they, they, they say, Hey, I'm a patriot, you know, just like the revolutionary war. And sure. therefore I'm going to, I'm going to stand up and, you know, we're going to have a second revolution. And I would argue uh, that that is the least patriotic thing you can do. And that's not the answer. And it, it's not the answer, but it's the least, at least American thing you can do because that revolution, that armed violent revolution was supposed to end you know, armed, violent revolutions. They said, hey, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a representative form of government, and it's your responsibility to keep your freedom by making sure that these representatives are the right ones in office. And I think that's the most American, most political thing to do. I think if you if you were able to bring back Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, I think they'd say, no, <laughs> we're not looking for another armed conflict. We gave you this beautiful piece of paper here that that you know gives you the ability to pick your representation vote you know? them out yeah we're not we did this the constitution doesn't give you the the ability to, to shoot your opponent that's yeah. wrong in fact it stopped that it said hey look you need to be engaged you need to right. pick your uh, your representative so don't just sit home scratching your head saying well that's i'm not i can't do it yeah yes you can right it's called a vote right and talk to your friends don't be afraid to talk to your friends if you truly believe in it go to san diego county gun owners dot dot org or S D O S S D O what is it? <laughs> SDCGO dot org because the And then the, you can see the list of people if you're confused. Together we will win is our motto. We mean it. Absolutely. The price of liberty, the price of freedom is ever vigilance. Oh my gosh. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. This is FM ninety six one AM eleven seventy. The answer. The answer. This is Gun Sports Radio. Uh, you know, if you need to take a CCW class for your San Diego CCW, want an Arizona or Florida or a multi-state CCW, we got an answer for you. CCWUSA.com. CCWUSA offers small class sizes, expert instruction, fit your schedule and your wallet. Three classes every month and two weekend classes on and one on Friday, and that's Saturday. Well, January 11th already passed, but the 17th is a Friday. And Saturday, the 25th, all starting at 8 a.m. All you need to do is go to ccwusa.com to sign up. There's also private lessons, great dates and times to meet your busy schedule. Check their website out for details and how to apply. Hey, have you been to AO Sword Firearms in El Cajon? Holy moly. 
They have got the widest selection of guns in San Diego County with over 600 unique guns in stock, including hundreds of used guns. Go see their full-service, experienced gunsmith. They can do everything from mild repairs to full custom firearms. Ao Sword Firearms Store located at 929 East Main Street in the city of El Cajon. Go to their website at aosword.com or you can call them at 619-749-4867. Build, buy, or repair. That's Ao Sword Firearms. Again, 619-749-4867 or just go to aosword.com. And who do we have on the line? The one and only David Chong. How you doing, guys? Kicking chickens, buddy. How about you? Well, I'm, I was up at the range yesterday uh, teaching a eight-hour CCW certification course for uh, uh, eight students. And uh, guess who I run into on the range? Who? Who? Chime up. Uh, chime in there, Michael. Oh, me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't mind him. <laughs> that was yesterday, and that was me. Yeah. Dude, he's got uh, new skis on his mind. Yeah, he's not even thinking about yesterday. It was a different range, though. I was on an. Ar- I was on the archery range. Yeah, he was cheating on us, guys. I saw you were him. Archery? He had an archery bow in his hand. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that doesn't even go bang. Since when did That's you pick right. up archery? Uh, I've uh, shot it since I was a kid, uh, but on and off here for for years. Uh. I, we started to get back into it, but we had some uh, technical difficulties. So I got to go. Uh, I actually, you know, who I'm going to look up is uh, is uh, Hollywood, Holyfield. Oh, uh, Joe! I'm going to go uh, corner that guy and make him fix my bow. Well, there's a really good bow place right next to Old yeah. Trident. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hey, Dave. You know, a, a lot of people I see blame the equipment when they have yeah, a Yeah, I, I, I wasn't going to say it, but you're right. That's I just right. didn't want to get, I was out there, I didn't want to get mistaken for a bear. There were a lot of guys shooting you, a bear. Oh, so shoot. I like, oh, now, remember, yeah. it's the Indian, it's not the arrow. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> um, we were at a, a, a great range, and I, I personally feel it's like uh one of Southern California's best kept gun secrets, uh, the Lemon Grove Rod and Gun Club, yeah. private club with a uh, rifle uh, out to 200 yards with steel targets and uh, uh, covered uh, shooting benches, uh, a pistol pit where uh, you can work from the holster if you're a, a valid CCW holder, and we're getting more and more of those. And it's and not first, in uh, Lemon Grove. <laughs> but it's not in Lemon Grove. It's that's where we have our club meetings. But the the actual range is easy, right off Tavern Road in uh, Alpine. Yeah, uh, no, they, they really do a lot. encourage people to look into that. They do a lot of events up there, and we just did a Women on Target this yeah. morning up at the uh, Alpine Rod and Gun Club there on the Tavern Road. Right. Exactly. Good. Good. So, so, uh, yeah, look into membership there. It, it, it's, you, you get the range to yourself half the time. It's, it's only 500 members, and we're not full. So Wow. So you were teaching a CCW class. I got to tell you, every day, um, I, I'm not exaggerating, every day um, somebody doesn't know that San Diego is uh, issuing CCWs now. Every day, no matter how much well, we promote it. How, how long have we it. not been issuing CCWs? I, well, I, I agree. But Dave, why don't it you... Can you yeah. Can yeah. you talk a little bit? I mean, are you are you seeing a huge influx? How many people did you have in your class? Or can you maybe just huge. give us so, your thoughts on all this? Yeah, I'm I'm very happy. I mean, people just need to know unequivocally because I get argued with by by people who say, "Well, no, that's only for the rich and famous and politically connected." Yeah. It, maybe they used to be right, but they're they're years behind the times now. Uh, I had eight people, and uh, that happens to be my maximum capacity. We had. Uh, we had to tell four people uh, no this time, and that's kind of the, the, the norm now. I'm having to tell people, sorry, our classes are full. Um, we, uh, we we specifically limit them because uh, my style is I don't do any PowerPoint, uh, no no videos. It is all uh, uh, sort of kind of on. Tra- training. Yeah, exactly. And uh, people love the... Uh, the anecdotal stories about uh, you know real world events and how how that applies to, to you know the considerations that they have to make in in carrying. But we had eight people, and uh, they ranged from a active duty marine to a guy in the fire service to a uh, married mom with a uh, nine month old and and no 
no uh, no formal training or you know official experience just just a just a mom stay at home mom uh, got her ccw yep yeah. i've i've had people uh uh i've actually helped people get approved uh with my consulting service who uh we've had a couple of full-time college students and you go well how, and you scratch your head and how does that work because they can't even carry uh at their main place of you know quote unquote employment that they can't carry on campus. But if you can show valid, you know, a, a reasonably worded uh, uh, concern for your safety, then uh, this sheriff will issue. And I want to get this back to what you were talking about, gosh, the past hour. So I don't want to beat a dead sure. horse here, but um, uh, Sheriff Gore was taken to task by uh, the anti-gun state government and said, hey, you, you got to raise your uh, CCW fees to the maximum allowable because we just raised those. And so you got to you got to step up and make this unaffordable for the masses. And he said, no, no, we we're comfortable with our uh, fees, but we'll take a look at that. Um and he, and he 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 said ultimately that's going to be up to the board of supervisors who set those fees, and hey we got a supervisors race coming up so we need to make sure we get the right people in there. Ah, good news! I'm glad you brought that up. Well, yeah, yeah to it, his credit, he was again. very much against that. Yeah, yeah, he has. He uh, I respect a person who will go from a a. a frankly, a wrong position to to considering new information and make the right decision. And so regardless of what has happened in the past, uh, I uh, uh, I support his his support of uh, our right to carry and also the defense of of the right to carry for people of uh, all, you know, all income levels. Uh, California is trying very hard to price people out of gun. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and I I value my let's call them low income friends lives the, the same as my high income friends lives you, your your economic status should not be an indicator of what your life is worth Mm-mm. no way yeah so great class yesterday it was a, a beautiful day outside uh uh we spend about five hours in the classroom and, and three hours on the range i gotta tell you uh, and this is not just for ccw candidates but just for shooters in general, as a, as a professional instructor, it is amazing. Uh, if, if you've never sought professional training, and not just from uh, your, your buddy who's good at guns, but professional training, you owe yourself the favor of, of at least doing a two-hour session with somebody. It doesn't have to be me. Pick somebody and get two hours out there with a, a professional. Uh, because I, I, took, I took that Marine uh, who was shooting great groups. I changed his grip up and uh, all of a sudden he could shoot at double the pace with half the, the, uh, half the grouping size. Wow. Um, uh, same thing for the doing that uh, for Marine. Fire. That's saying something. Those yeah, guys it really is. <laughs> but you know, Dave, that's kind of, yeah. that's kind of like having your dad teach you to drive and then you go and get yeah. a professional driving instructor. Sure. Sure. Uh, it, it's, it's always different when a, when a professional is going to take an objective look and, uh, the difference too, is that they may be a good shooter. You know, someone who's tutoring you may be a good shooter, but being a good shooter is different than being a good teacher. And they're not one in the same. Mm-hmm. Very uh, I know good. some good teachers who can't shoot. <laughs> but, um, uh, it helps when you can do both. Yeah, it surely does. Well, that, so what kind of classes do you, do you, do you, do you do more than, than the, uh, the CCW certification? I, I do. So everything from uh, basic uh, basic firearm familiarization, uh, whether that's how to uh, how to care for and how to feed and care for your AR-15 or your handgun, uh, all the way through, we have something called the AO Sword Academy, and uh, it's we, we call it a gunfighter school. It is the practical tactical application of the modern firearm and Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit about my background uh, six years in the service and then six more years I was a uh, uh, counterterrorism instructor uh, uh, for DHS and and I was teaching uh, MOUT that's military operations and urban terrain and and close quarters combat Um, I'm also a a world champion martial artist so I, I, I blend in all of that background plus my ongoing training that i seek uh, just a you know, pause there um uh, i'm a professional instructor with many many certifications i pay other people on a regular basis 
to train me sure. because I am I am never going to be done learning. So if, I, folks, if, if I can be humble enough to tr- have other people look at my technique, show me new things. And I, you know, you integrate some of it and some of it, you go, okay, that's neat. It didn't work for me. And you, mm-hmm. you leave it by the side, but <clears throat> you, you got to be constantly learning. Uh, so I, uh, even, uh, even I Jordan had a coach. Yeah, amen. That's right. Exactly. So I take all of that background and experience and uh, apply it to uh, the modern uh, civilian battle space. So if, if God forbid, you were uh, pressed to use a firearm in self-defense, either in the home or uh, in a civilian environment, uh, here are the tactical considerations you have to make. Here, here's how to run the, the gun. I've trained Navy SEALs uh, and, and taught them something. I've learned something from them. Uh, uh, and I've, I've taught single moms. Um, I, I really enjoy that aspect of guns, sharing, sharing the science of gunfighting uh, with people. Wow, that's amazing. So how do people find out more about your class? I know we know all about your, your shop and your gunsmithing, which is all amazing. But I, how do we find out more about your classes? Or what do we do to find ALSword.com. It, it, yeah, it, what, hap- what, uh, what needs to happen is David needs to put uh, more more of his stuff on his website. We, I'm, I'm often, uh, I fill the classes up enough just by word of mouth that I, I've been lazy in doing that. But I really want to open it up to more people. And we're also th- thinking about getting a second instructor on uh, uh, assisting me and then later uh, expanding our classes. So I can fit... I've got like a, a 40 person waiting list, but sometimes number wow. 40 jumps to the front because you know, the, the, the 39 people in front of him can't make this Saturday. And so uh, they get to the front. All right, buddy. Awesome. Hey, awesome. I see every time we talk to you, we learn something new. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for having me guys. I sure appreciate time with you. Well, thank you for all your support. That's AOSword.com, folks. Go check them out or just run down to El Cajon. He'll talk to you until the cows come in. <laughs> This is <laughs> FM 96.1 AM 1170. The Answer. Thank you. Folks, welcome back. Gun Sports Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. California assault weapon laws makes it almost impossible to own an AR pattern rifle. What's the solution? Cali Key. Converts any mil-spec direct impingement AR platform rifle into a straight pull bolt action rifle so it can have all the features without being considered an assault weapon. It's a true drop-in solution. No milling, no aesthetic modifications and no turning off your gas system keep your entire ar collection intact at a price you can afford cali key that's k-a-l-i-k-e-y.com cali key self-defense and is an emergencies can happen to anyone unfortunately the justice system may not be on your side while you protect your family and property u.s law shield is here to defend you 24 7 365 days a year with a comprehensive self-defense covering at all affordable prices. Bad guys don't take days off, and neither does our coverage. What's your plan after you defend yourself or your family? Consider a plan from U.S. Law Shield. Check them out today at uslawshield.com. That's uslawshield.com. Home mortgage interest rates have dropped to yet another low. If you're looking to buy or refi, or if you're considering a reverse mortgage, call a local mortgage guy that you can trust. Call Chris Wiley. That's who we recommend. PRMI Mortgage. For nearly 25 years, Chris has been helping local San Diegans with all their mortgage needs. Call Chris at 619-722-1303 or just go to primerez.com backslash alpine. He just, uh, he's uh, sponsoring a table at Gun Prom again this year. So we, what's the date of the Gun Prom? Gun Prom is May 16th. Buy your tickets now. Early bird special. Am I working that one? Only good till... No, you're attending. You're attending. Oh, you got somebody else? Oh, yep. Uh, only good till January 31st. So go to gunprom.com gotcha. uh, to buy tickets. You can buy individual tickets or sponsor a whole table. But Chris Wiley from... Uh, 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 what is it? P- Prime Residential? Uh-huh. Yeah, Prime Residential is uh, a table sponsor. Great so dude. So we... 
All right, so time for another edition of Stump My Nephew. Sam, are you there? Yeah, I am. How are you guys? Good, man. Hey, did you hear the uh, uh, Masada Yub uh, interview? Yeah, you know what? I went into the dining room and opened up my laptop and put on my headphones and listened to Masa Yub instead of watching the Packers game with your sister and your parents. <laughs> Good man. Good man. <laughs> smart. That's smart. Well, you, you, you'll, you've you been rewarded. The Packers, looks like they're, they're winning here in, late in the third. So, All right. Well, what did you think, by the way? Any takeaways before we get to your trivia question? Um, I mean, nothing specific that I want to point out, just like everything he said, it was, I, I appreciate that he has the level of experience that he has. And I was really interested to hear him bust a lot of those misconceptions about don't talk to the police, don't talk to the police, don't talk to the police. As someone who, as he said, has been assisting as an expert witness since 1979, yeah. which mind you is... 20 years before I was born. Yeah. Well, Thanks yeah. for rubbing it in. Yeah. yeah, and I would ask if you were familiar with IU, but that, that would be a silly question, so <laughs> I have no point in that. Yeah, he's, he's uh, nothing short of a legend. Truly. Well, I, I thought it was interesting. I thought the Trayvon Martin uh, comments were really good. I thought that was really interesting, yeah. So, All right, here we go. You ready for this? Uh, I hope so. Okay, stump my nephew. Uh, Sam here is my nephew. And every week we ask him a question. Uh, normally the questions are sent in from a listener or a member of San Diego County Gun Owners. Um, if we use your question, you get a shirt. If we, you stump my nephew, which happens only very rarely, you get your shirt uh, and you get a hat from San Diego County Gun Owners. This week, uh, the question is actually from a guy named Mike Schwartz who lives in Santee. And the reason I'm asking this question is because something interesting came up. We actually posted a ridiculous tweet by Michael Moore, uh, movie maker, documentary maker, Michael Moore. You know who that guy is, right? Unfortunately. <laughs> so we're not going to read the whole tweet because he's an absolutely ridiculous fool. But part of his tweet, he talked about uh, somebody uh, using an AK-15 which I'm pretty positive that he didn't know what the heck he was talking about and screwed up. But um, the question is, was he wrong? Does an AK-15 exist? If so, what is an AK-15? All right. Thanks very much for the question. Um, Michael Schwartz from Santee. That's what you said, right? Yeah, that's his, I believe that's how he pronounces his name. All right. I'll take your word for it. Santee, by the way, the La Jolla of East County. Go ahead. Oh, of course. How could I forget? So, um, Michael Moore, and he's not the kind of person who everything he says should be taken with a grain of salt. He's the kind of person who basically everything he says should be completely dismissed outright without further, without intensive research to, to back up every single word. But that being said, what he probably meant was either a AR-15 or AK-47. But frankly, he's just so uninformed that he doesn't even know what to call what he thinks he's talking about. Now, that being said, um, with the AR platform and the AK platform being so popular on the American civilian market in the past few decades, inevitably some people have tried to come up with some kind of hybrid. And most of these so-called hybrids aren't really. They're just AR-15s with cu in 7.62 by 39 with custom lowers that take AK magazines. But some companies like Faxon have actually really hybridized the two platforms, basically an AR-15 with an AK gas system. That's accurate. That's actually there are actually two answers to this question, and that is absolutely one of them. Um, the <laughs> the other answer, though, is that... Is, uh, yeah, the, um, the, the latest AK variants coming out of uh, Kalashnikov concern in Russia are the AK-12 and AK-15, the AK-12 being in 545 and the AK-15 being in 762 by 39 They're basically the same rifle, just modernized for the 21st century. <laughs> there you go. So you got, not only did he get one answer right, he got both possible answers. So there actually does exist, and particularly that 
That second one, the AK-15, which I believe they call the AK-15 because the AK-47 came out in 1947. The AK-74 came out in 1974. I believe the AK-15 was designed in 2015. Yeah, not that Michael Moore actually knows that. But. Not that I want to emphasize <laughs> he didn't know what he's talking about. Uh, I don't know. Maybe he's a Russian sleeper agent. We need to look into that. <laughs> he's so dumb, he accidentally got something right. But uh, the AK-15 is uh, basically, if you look at it, it looks like an AK with all the, the all the modularity. Is that a word, Sam? Modularity? Yep. All the modularity of, uh, that's another question you got, right? Of, a, of an AR. So it's got like a collapsible stock. It's got rails for a red dot, that sort of thing. Um, and then, of course, you know, my AR actually has an AK-74 brake. So that might actually be considered an ak uh, 15. But anyway, excellent job, Sam. Awesome. Very, very good job. As usual. Thanks very much. And this Michael Moore thing, like I said, basically everything that comes out of his mouth should be dismissed outright. And this isn't really a case of um, a broken clock is right twice a day. This is a case of a calendar from 1992 coincidentally works in 2020. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Very much so. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, buddy. Well, excellent job. Thank you very much. Go get back to the fight in Virginia. It looks like you guys are, are going to continue to need it. We were talking a little bit about that as well. So uh, uh, any word on that at all? Any, any updates? Anything new? Nothing yet. Not until January 20th, which there's going to be a rally in Richmond, but I can't go because of school. Uh, that, you know, that takes precedence. But I will be sure to report whatever happens. Excellent. All right, all right buddy. Good job. Always good talking to you. You too. You guys have a good night. All right, Thank you, Sam. Go Pack Go. Absolutely. Go pack. All right, folks. Well, we've got a couple more minutes left before Bob Siegel comes on, and you definitely don't want to touch the dial because Bob has got quite the show prepared for you guys. Anything? Any last words, Mr. Well, you, so check out gunprom.com. Uh, this is going to be the biggest, best, most fun uh, uh, Second Amendment celebration dinner that we've ever had. This is uh, our fifth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we started out in 2015. Our Five first dinner already. was 2016. Yeah. Um, so this will be our fifth, and uh, it's going to be a really good time. We're going to have uh, you, you, you know, prizes, which are you know, a lot of times are firearms. Uh, we're going to have a silent auction. We're going to have a ton of stuff in the silent auction, uh, and then we're going to have a live auction, and then we're going to have awards, and we're going to have over 800 people this year. Whoa. Where are you having it at? So we're going to have it at the Town & Country again, but they had to upgrade us to their even bigger room. So we said, "Look, last year we had our big, we had the, we had your big room." And they said, "Well, this year you need our even bigger room." Ooh, yeah, with eight hundred, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, well, folks, go to San Diego County Gunowners dot com, sign up. Thank hey, you. really want to thank Firearms Legal Protection, San Diego County Gun Owners, CCW USA, U.S. Law Shield, Cali Key, PRMI Mortgage, Gasky Dillon and Balance LLP, the Gun Range San Diego, and of course AO Sword. <laughs> Firearms. We want to thank Lance, Michael Schwartz, Joe Germisi, and Brendan, our infamous board op, right here on Gun Sports Radio. Go to gunsportsradio.com for podcasts and up to date information. Joe, final word? Uh, that's, that's a good that, one. That's a great word. <laughs> All right, right here on FM 961, AM 1170, The Answer. <laughs> This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.